Hi all. My name is Alek Pavlov. I had been teaching the dream method of Suttavada for uh, four years and I'm I had been practicing dream method for six years. And now at now I have quitted from Suttavada and I consider their uh, activities and their method rather harmful. And in this video, I will explain you why I am thinking like this. I do this video for two reasons. Firstly, I would like to help people to avoid the harm from Suttavada. Just consider what I'm going to tell you and try to understand if it is relevant. And secondly, I'm doing this for my former teachers in Suttavada, for Bhantavi Malaramsi, for David Johnson, for Kanti Kema, because I believe and I want to believe that they are good people, actually. Maybe they are mistaken, but they have the best motives. First of all, let me uh, describe how the dream practice uh, proceeds according to my observations. You see, I am I was a teacher and I studied a lot of people and I have contacts with a lot of people who studied with another teachers. And that was, I think, several hundred or maybe more than a thousand people. For all these years, I haven't met any exceptions for, from uh, these observations. The essence of the practice in Suttavada, as far as I understand it at now, after all these years, is to learn how to slow down your mind up to zero and the state when your mind is slowed down to zero is what uh, called in suttava in the suttavada as niroda that very niroda from suttas so you slow down your mind to zero and you get niroda as the Suttavada says. Of course, they declare that their purpose or goal is to study how our mind works. But we'll see later that this goal uh, actually is ignored in the Suttavada. So all practitioners in dream can be divided in two groups. The first ones are those who um, fail to slow uh, down their minds to zero. They try but 
they just fails. Some people just cannot stop their mind, cannot slow down it to zero. And other group are those who uh, are successful in this process and they managed to get to the uh, zero slowing down their mind. And the first group has their practice, uh, which is just stopped on, on, on the one level. And the other group are told that they get uh, some achievement, some stage of enlightenment after they get to Nirodha. There are many people in Suttavada who are told they are uh, anagami. And there is at least one who is a hunt. In every retreat, maybe one third of people, of participants, are uh, told that they are Sarapana or Sakadagami or Anagami. I was one of those who managed to learn to slow down uh, my mind to zero. I can do that. I can slow my mind to zero. The trick here is to uh, maintain a, a little level of awareness until the end, until the zero slowing down. Because if you fall asleep, you cannot uh, slow down your mind because the sleeping is an active uh, state. So I can describe it. Uh, I'm sitting, there is no drowsiness. I calm down more and more, letting go of everything. And at some point, it's all just shut down. It's complete shut down, just off. After a while, I turn on uh, again and, and see this world again. And uh, first moments, I don't understand where I am. And I don't understand how much time has passed, first moments. And um, it seems that this world is reloaded, this moment. And even I stayed in this state for several minutes, I feel very refreshed. And uh, my teachers testified to this state as Miroda. So for me now, this state is quite usual daily state. I can enter this uh, almost any moment, maybe for uh, after maybe five or 10 minutes of sitting. The problem here is that this is not the Nirodha at all. As far as I understand, 
this state is a kind of special sleeping. It is a sleeping state, maybe a kind of direct enter into the uh, slow sleeping phase. You know, there is slow sleeping when you, you are sleeping. Uh, this is a stage of sleeping when you do, don't uh, see any pictures, any dreams, and this is a deep state of sleeping. So here you just directly enter into this deep sleeping. This is how I see this state now. Actually, I even know a truck driver who is able to enter into this state. And he uses this state to refresh his mind when he is on the highway, the, his way. And needless to say that this man is not enlightened, enlightened and uh, has nothing to do with Buddhism at all. When I tried to go another way than this falling asleep, but still staying within to him, I was faced with tension which in the twin uh, method inevitably arises in, in such kind of cases. So the Suttavada declares that a person can face mental or psycho or somatic uh, problems only if he or she practices so-called one-pointed concentration. And why one-pointed concentration is put opposite to the twin method. I will not go now um, to the thesis that the very dichotomy, uh, you know, one point of concentration, vice dream is absolutely, you know, false dichotomy. I just, I'm not going to go in, in, into this uh, theme now, but I can assure you that these problems, mental problems and psychosomatic problems occurred in, in the twin not less often than in any other Buddhist school. One-pointed concentration. I occurred such kind of cases, both among my students and among the students who studied in U.S. Meditation Center, Damasuka. In these cases, Sutawada teachers uh, typically uh, state that this person who got some problems with practice simply does not uh, do what they is told to do. You know, that she, he or she deviated from the right method. But so-called one-pointed concentration schools says the same things in the same uh, cases.
Now, let's talk about the doctrinal stuff, doctrinal basis of the Suttavada, the method of Suttavada is based on the idea that the craving or tanha has a physical correlate in the form of tension or tightness in your head. Actually, uh, craving is equal to the tension or tightness in your head. However, this thesis is not mentioned in suttas. You can see, uh, for example, the description of craving in uh, Namachaka Pavatana Sutta or Mahasatipatana Sutta. There is not a word about tension or tightness in this description. There are words in Pali for tension and tightness and so on. And Buddha clearly uh, spoke better than Bhantavi Malaramsi. But the Buddha did not use these words. Bhante Vimalaramsi also links uh, the tension and tightness in our heads with the bodily formations in suttas, uh, which mentioned uh, in uh, the descriptions of uh, Anapanasati meditation. And he says that the bodily formation is the tension and tightness in your head. But in suttas, in many cases, in many places, we can see that bodily formations are breathe in and breathe out, not tension and tightness in your head. Just breathe in and breathe out are the bodily formations. You can see that, for example, in uh, the Sutta of Majjhima Nikaya, number 44. Buddha does not say anywhere that you uh, should stay in your head and you should drop your body as Bhantavi Malaramsi teaches. Again, the Buddha knew all these words and Buddha was extremely skillful in speaking, in, you know, speech. And nevertheless, he did not use these words. But Bhantavi Maharamsi did. All this are uh, obvious contradictions with suttas. From the basic idea that craving is equal to the tension and tightness in your head stems the next thesis that the relaxation is very important, is crucial and uh, stems the method of six Rs. Suttavada declares that the method of six Rs is nothing but the right 
effort from the Eightfold Path. Or as they translated this term, the harmonious exercise, not the right effort, but the harmonious exercise. And I will also tell you how wrong this kind of translation as well. I do this, this later. If we read the suttas, if we read the definition of the right effort, for example, in the above mentioned two suttas, Dhammachaka Palatana or Mahasadipatana suttas, we can see that the right effort is actually effort is actually the diligence. No relaxation, just effort and diligence. And the right effort is something you should do constantly, but not, you know, uh, episodically, like uh, six hours. You do that constantly. Again, there are all these words in Pali. There is relaxation in Pali language. And Buddha does not use this word in this case. And Bhante says that Relaxation is pasambayati, but pasambayati is not relaxation. It is to calm down. Relaxation is another word in the Pali language. You know, if you think that Bhante Malaramsi is more skillful in speech, in words, than the Buddha was. If you believe that the Buddha could be clumsy in his speech, or maybe monks can be, you know, incorrect in uh, the process of the transition of texts, you don't believe in Buddha and in Sangha. And you do believe in Bhante Malaramsi. But the Buddha says that there is no teacher after Buddha. Our, our uh, teacher is Tama and Vinaya not any person, not Bhantavimal Rams, just Dhamma and Vinaya, just texts of Sutta, of Suttas. Bhante Vimal Ramsi says that the mindfulness is to observe how our um, attention of our mind goes from one object to another. But in the suttas, we see absolutely different uh, definitions. We see that right mindfulness is actually satipatthana. And what is satipatthana? Saripatthana is the practice of observation, of investigation uh, of any emerging phenomenon. We investigate it within terms of 
ธรรมะ
for some people it is painful actually but beneficial if a person can practice uh, with uh, pleasant feelings in Suttavada, he or she finally falls asleep. If a person is painful, he or she get a problems. Now, Bhante says that Tama is pleasant and uh, in Suttavada they call all the points of um, the Eightfold Path as harmonious. Or Delson Armstrong uh, calls it effective, harmonious or effective. But Buddha uses the word Sama, Pali word Sama, and Sama is not harmonious and Sama is not effective. Sama is right. Sama is righteous. Buddha, in uh, the Buddha, in one of suttas, calls a uh, righteous person Sama Gatikara. Righteous Gatikara. And difference between right, harmonious, and effective is very significant. The right has to do with good and evil. Avoid evil, cultivate good, and purify your mind. This is Tam. This is about good and evil. If you uh, follow the right, this the rock on your your way. You must cut this rock through this rock. By all your effort, you must cut through this rock. That what is right. You should be manly on this way. And harmonious is uh, about compromises. You should be a com a compromise for uh, person if you are harmonious if you face a rock on your way you just sit and uh, just sit peacefully and do nothing and smile and if the buddha or future buddha was a harmonious person he would not left his home his palace. Effectiveness is devoid of any uh, moral meaning at all. It is out of moral. You know, a murderer can be effective and at the face of rock and effective person uh, would try to pass by this rock. But in our case, in Sansara, there is no roundabout way. We should cut through it. There is no another way. This kind of distortion, all this harmonious and effective so on, lead to moral, a kind of moral um, 
you know, ambivalence or moral ambiguity. Precepts are needed in Suttavada just to have your meditation peaceful and pleasant and so on. You just run away from the pain. And so we get um, a person whom Bhante Vimalaramsi himself uh, called an anagami. And this person uh, starts a spiritual business by teaching six hours to get money. And we get uh, another person who was told he is an anagami as well. And he smokes and drinks and uh, likes delicious food. And these are real cases. Compromises. You know, there is a wor world of so-called unconscious gods. This is absolutely not the liberation, absolutely not the awakening. It's just a kind of state of, you know, of shutdown. And I suspect that if you are uh, successful in the Tuim, in the Suttavada practice, and you can stay in their quasi nirodha more and more, you are going to be born in this wor world, the world of unconscious gods. And according to Buddhism, when your life will end up in this world of unconscious God and gods, you will fall down into the very lower world's realms. This is not a human realm that will be a realm of, you know, some beings like primitive animals or microbes. You came to get the salvation. You came to get the awakening, but you get something opposite. You get the world of unconscious gods. And they tell you that this is the Buddha's Dhamma. And now my dear ex-teachers, just think what you are going to get if you say that this kind of practice is the Buddha's Dhamma. Guys, you are going to hell.
I could give many more arguments, both in the doctrine, uh, on the jhanas, on the suttas, on the forgiveness meditation that is a separate uh, topic. But I'm not going to evolve all, all these topics right now because I think that what had been said is just enough. Just enough for you to think. At the end of this video, I would like to uh, consider just one question. People ask this question every time when I uh, tell them what, what uh, I have told to you right now. They ask why after all the practicing the suttavada is beneficial. Why? There is two reasons, in my opinion. The first reason is that the relax, uh, relaxation as itself is quite useful, quite good thing. Yes, this is a good thing. Uh, it is um, used in some therapeutic methods like self-hypnosis, you know. Uh, but the relaxation is not liberation. Relaxation is just a therapeutic method and it has its limit. It useful for some ex extent only. If you try to go further, it can become, become harmful. And anyway, again, the relaxation has nothing to do with the awakening, the Tama. This is the first reason. The second reason is that they in Suttavada use Brahma Viharas in Twim. And Brahma Viharas are extremely beneficial method. Is dif it, it, it is uh, difficult to spoil by anything. It will be uh, beneficial anyway. In the Masuka Meditation Center, they stop uh, teach the breathing meditation with a twin method. This is my guess, but I think that uh, they stop using the breathing meditation because without Brahma Viharas, uh, the unworthiness of dream becomes obvious sooner or later. So they use Brahma Viharas as a sort of mask. But you know, Brahma Viharas was not invented in, in the Suttavada. Brahma Viharas are used in almost every Buddhist uh, school. 
And moreover, the two first uh, stages of this practice are not from suttas. It was taken from the Sutki Magha. And the stage of the directions is described in suttas in a bit of different way without the, all these radiations and so on. For this, let me take my leave. I wish you all happiness, people. I apologize if my activity has caused any one of you harm or distress. May all living beings be happy. Thank you.